Sports Podcast, and uh, we're looking forward to kind of jumping into conversation with you. Uh, before we do that, uh, give me a little brief introduction about yourself, then we will jump right in. Hi, my name is Taylor Troutman. I'm a junior, and I play softball, and I'm going to go to Mississippi State to play it. <laughs> okay, awesome. Thank you for that. So, yeah, let's start out. We kind of always start out here with the recruiting process, especially for somebody that's been through that and committed um, as yourself. So take us through that process of how that was for you, your family, and then what led to your decision uh, to head to Mississippi State. So my recruiting process, it was it was really fun. So I made the plan a little bit before to not go to school on September 1st <laughs> and because it would have been too stressful. Yeah. And so I stayed home and I stayed up till midnight with my mom because my dad works in a school. So he had a good bed, (laughs) but I stayed up with my mom and I got my first call at midnight and it was like really exciting. And then it was kind of stressful because my time zone is um, different than the Eastern part of Kentucky. So people were like almost texting me at 11 And then they had to wait an hour. So it was just like too, it was really confusing at first. And then like when people would schedule a call, they would call me an hour earlier. And I remember because I was at lunch with my mom and someone called me and I was like, hey, like, and they're like, is it okay if we do your call now? And I'm like, I'm at lunch with my mom. Can we do it at our time? (laughs) But it was just like really stressful just trying to make sure I said my time zone. Because if you look up Kentucky's time zone, it's Eastern and I'm on Central. So I had to make sure I sent like central time zone to everything. And then like when I woke up that morning, it was just like, I felt like I couldn't sleep and it was very jittery. I was like, this is, this is crazy. Like (laughs) it wasn't anything I was expecting and it's not something I could be like, oh yeah. Like it's hard to describe because it was so exciting and stressful. It was very stressful too, just to make sure like, you, you had to write everything down. You can't be mm. like, oh, like, call me at 8. This coach is going to call me at um. – and then, like, the times, like, you had to make sure you gave them enough time. And then if you had too little time, you're like, oh, well, I could have had another call. Like, <laughs> it was just crazy. <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, we've heard that, you know, from – whatever sport we've kind of interviewed, uh, you know, it's it, – like you, you started off with saying it was fun, but then it's also stressful. It's kind of just the – the everything into one, you know, like you're, you're just kind of doing a lot and everything's on your mind. Um, so definitely thank you for sharing that with us. Um, so next I want to ask you about um, just your journey through softball. When was the time for you that you kind of knew this was something you really wanted to start pursuing seriously? Mm-hmm. So I grew up around the sport. My dad played baseball in college okay. and he coached our high school baseball team. So I grew up around like softball and I played with my sister, but now she plays volleyball at USI, but she changed her path, but I stayed on mine. <laughs> um, but I played on this team called Indiana Magic Gold and I really had like a tough time and it was just like stressful. And I was like, you know, I really want to pursue this sport. Like I really like this. Yeah. And so I just wanted to find a new team. And um, so I just like dropped and that team and I was working and I was working I worked every day I did I would do defense and I would go to the gym which is right beside our field and then I would come back and do offense every single day it was during COVID too so it's just like better and I've got school work in yeah and my dad even was like wow she wants this and so I tra- followed like all travel teams and then that's when I landed on my dream travel team and I love them forever <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And I, and I love how you talked about, you know, like during, before your decision, everything with uh, like, you know, weighing the odds of travel team and whatever, like you just kept working, you know, and that's, yeah, uh, you know, I mean, that's something that <clears throat> talk a lot about on here, just like working hard. And even like, you know, even when something's not maybe like it's up in the air, you don't really know, but you got to keep working, never really stop. Um, mm-hmm. So next I want to ask um, if you can describe the feeling, you may not be able to, but can you put into words the feeling you get when you step on to that that grass and that dirt and right before a game, you're warming up with your teammates, you know, you got family there watching you, crowds there. Um, just how is that feeling for you? It brings me so much excitement. Um, I love bringing energy to teams. I like okay. being the hype girl. Nice. So anytime, like, someone's down, 
I'm like, let's get it. <laughs> I just love the like being so hype, and especially me being in the outfield. Yeah, I like have. There's only three of us, so it's just like we got a lot of room to cover with three of us. So it's just like I get to talk to them all the time and just be like, hey, like what's up? Like, but better watch this girl. Like she's gonna hit it in this gap. Like, <laughs> It's really exciting to keep everyone hype, and I love being in the grass. Like, it is so fun for me. I love – because I can see a lot, and mm. just – and if someone's starting to get down, I'm like, hey, it's all right. It's just a game. Like, we can – we got this. Like, yeah. it's it's exciting. <laughs> yeah, and, and you kind of mentioned something, and I've, I've talked with this about with a catcher before, because mm-hmm. the catcher's position, they can see – everything in front and then you're also seeing in the outfield everybody in front of you so you know you could see if somebody's kind of like uh, you know a mistake happened you're like you got to pick them up out there you know and mm-hmm. I I've always thought that was cool like you know even in the infield like when you got somebody in the outfield saying hey you know let's go and they're kind of turn around yeah. give them a thumbs up so um so this is a kind of a professional personal performance question for you what is something especially going into you know this season that you're starting now and then obviously before you get to college later on What's something for you that you've been trying to like hone in on and maybe work on or improve a little bit? Um, I've been trying, so it kind of goes inside a softball, okay, but it's also outside of softball too. I've been trying to really keep my faith in like Christ while performing the sport because sometimes mm. in that sport you're just like, oh, like this is me, this is me, like I'm just like so stressed in this time, yeah. But, like, I want to keep, like, oh, but, like, I need to talk to him because maybe he's the one that I can, like, pray to and help me out through this. Because it's a mind game. Softball is really, like, more mental than it is, like, physical. So when you're, like, stressed, like, it's more easier to talk to him because I like to pray before every single game. And that just makes me feel more, like, easy. So I've just been trying to work more faith into the game. Like, it's just, it's so mental. Like, you can't, you can't just beat yourself up every single time. You just got to keep, you got to really talk to the person that loves you all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it's it's crazy you say that because uh, I interviewed this morning. I was mm-hmm. with another softball player who's, she's going to college soon. She's a senior this year and her team won the state championship last year. And they were talking about how, she was talking about how that's one thing that their team uh, talked a lot about was how to bring the faith into there, you know, into mm-hmm. that. Um, and they kind of dedicated their season to kind of, to do that, to kind of work it in more. Um, and, you know, I talk about this a lot. We have a, a series we do called faith plus sports because it's not like faith and it, it's not like, you know, and, or it's both, you know, you can put them both together. Um, especially if the, if you're a believer in, in Christ. And I think that's, that should be your identity. And it's so hard yeah. to, to get, you know, or not hard. It's so easy to get wrapped up in a season, you know, a bad play, an injury, you know, how well you're doing, you know, stuff like that to where that mental, and, and you know, I've said this before, baseball and softball, you said it too. Um, there's so much mental to that. It, it's kind of like golf. Now, yes, you have to be a great athlete, I think, to play all the, those sports, but there is such a huge mental aspect to it. So I love what you said there, um, which I'll, I'll kind of jump to that question because I have a question about that. And you, you just talked about a little bit there, but kind of a little more detail about how you kind of handle the mental hurdles that come with playing at such a high level. So I love to, I always have my Bible in my car. Okay. So I like just, I will look up like verses, like where it's really good for athletes. And I have, I do a little middle school athletes Bible study. Oh, cool. And I love talking to them and I'm just like, I help them do with the mental spot because all yeah. are like have mental so I like having my bible in my car and just like looking at a verse or a little thing and it's just like it helps me feel more at ease and then I go pray before the game and then it's just like okay and then both of my grandparents have passed away and so I write them on my wrist always I always just write g plus p because they're called my granddad and my <laughs> Paul. and so it just makes me feel I don't know that really helps me with my um, mental because one thing I remember was like them always was like wow she's gonna go big one day <laughs> and so anytime I look at that I'm like wow they believed in me and sometimes I just like don't believe in myself and I'm like well they believe in me and they're looking yeah. at me. 
and they're they know I can do it. So I need to realize that I can do it too. Yeah, and I think, um, and I, I, that's a, I, I love that you uh, told that. Um, that's a beautiful thing because I always say like, if you're in kind of that moment, and I think it's one of those things. Obviously, it's I say a lot of things on here that are easier said than done um because we like i said earlier when you're in that moment it's just kind of like you feel like that's the world's coming down on you yeah but when you kind of stop and you think about like hey why you play this game you know number one um and like you said obviously number one being uh for god and then number two you, you talked about your family like how you're playing it for these these people that believed in you and and you know everything and and i think that's cool that you honor them by that way you know because they like you said sometimes we are we're our own worst enemy and we may not believe in ourselves even with other people do out here but in our minds, it's like, oh, man, I'm such a failure. But in reality, that's not really what it is, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So I think when you strip it all down to, like, the the beauty of it, that that's the beauty about sports, too, is, like, you, it brings people together. And, like, you, you know, even if people don't like it. So I've seen people that just really don't like sports, but then they have a family member play and they start getting into it. And just the support, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So I want to ask you about some advice you've been giving lately. What's some advice that, you know, this could be coaches, teammates, family members, that somebody's given you lately to really kind of stuck with you? Oh, okay, this one's hard because we have a guy on our coaching staff. His name's Wes Bennett, and he gives, like, the best advice. So, like, anytime we're stressed, like, he tells us – he gives us this breathing thing, and we do, like, a little breathing thing where it's, like, you breathe in for, like, four seconds and hold for six and breathe out for something else so that's really good when like I'm stressed and I'm like oh, yeah. I remember I need to do this breathing thing that he told me to do so <laughs> it's not really advice but it's something to do and then oh yeah definitely yeah and then I love doing meditation and so he gave me advice on that like hey you need to look at this podcast and do their meditation and so some days there's pictures of me that I'm just laying down because our umpires are taking forever. And I'm just laying down on the gravel and <laughs> phone is right here. And then once you do it, like people will start doing it. It's it's so crazy because I that's how Christ works. Like once someone sees you um, reading the Bible, then someone else will do it and someone else will do it. So like when meditation, like when you're like stressed, he was like, okay, hey, you need to do this before the game. So I don't know. It's not really advice, but it was just like. Well, it's a vast to it's a vast to do something, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. So it really, like, makes you feel more calm and feel like it's not gonna be. It's gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. And uh, talking about the breathing thing, uh, one of a person we've interviewed, um, they said their mom would tell them the only voice that she would hear during the game was her mom saying the two words, "Just breathe." And mm-hmm. so when you kind of goes back to that, like, and she said, I would always hear it over and over again. Cause that's what she always would tell me. Cause I think it's in a moment, you might need to just step back and take like a big breath and deep breath. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and I've seen, I've seen, I've actually known personally people that kind of do that, you know, before a game, whatever, just kind of, they're off over here, you know, and they're just kind of sitting down and being their own. Cause I, to me, um, I think sitting down in the, you know, in our crazy world that we live in where everything's fast paced, like to just, get away and sit and be silent for a little bit. You know, I think that is, that is so undervalued in our world today. So I like that you kind of started that. Um, so next I want to ask you about, you probably have a ton of these since you've played, um, but what's one of your best sports moments so far? Um, and obviously that's so far because you got a lot to, to go. Okay. So um, we were playing our rival team in high school ball. It was Madisonville. And I, was about to break the home run record and the RBI record. And so I knew I needed like two to break it. Yeah. And I was on third and I needed one more home run to break it. Cause I was tied or I was tied. Like it was just really close, but um, it was the craziest. Thing. <laughs> I did it and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is out. And I look over at my dad. Cause my dad's our high school coach. And I look over at him and I point to him and I'm just like, oh my gosh. And I just did that. So I broke the home run record and the RBI record just in one swing. Yeah. As a freshman. And it was the coolest experience. Ever. <laughs> like I cannot believe that. Yeah. And I, it was it was awesome. Yeah, that I mean that's that sounds really cool, especially like you said, as a freshman. And then to be able to share that, you know, that moment with your dad, you know, like you 
I like how you talked about you looked over and pointed. I think that's so cool. Um, so that's awesome. So now I'm going to kind of, the last question, I'm going to step away from sports and school and everything and just kind of ask you about you. Like, what else do you like to do when you have the time besides softball and everything? What else do you like to do? I love hanging out with my friends. Uh, one friend in, in specific, her name's Libby. We grew up together. Uh, I played, like, we went to third grade together. Okay. We were still friends together. But we can do, like, anything together, and it's so fun. <laughs> a little lunch, and then we read the Bible together. And then, like, we have these fun little things that we just do. <laughs> we put, like, little note cards on people's cards of, or we, like, there was one point where we put, like, little Bible verses on Post-it notes, and we went around Walmart trying to put it on, like, sneak it in people's Oh, really? Bible. Thing, and we would sneak it in their cart and then like run off it was really <laughs> but we just have these little fun things that we just like to do and I just love hanging out with my friends when I'm actually free <laughs> awesome well that is I mean that sounds first of all it's 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 so cool to be able to enjoy life with those with people that you can and especially like-minded people mm-hmm. as you talked about you get to do things that you both enjoy like you talked about reading the bible and doing those little things which Honestly, that's, I mean, I think, I think a lot of people should do what you did in Walmart. You know, I think that's, we might need to start that, you know, like, Hey, just doing that. Cause I mean, I don't think you can get too much of letting people try to read stuff like that, you know? So yeah, that's a cool idea. I may take that from you. <laughs> it doesn't cost anything. You can just get like a little paper. It's so easy. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing some of your story with me and I enjoyed it. Obviously good luck. Uh, well first, uh, cause I mean, everybody's seasons, like we've talked to people, all over the place, California, everywhere, everywhere. And obviously you're in Kentucky. So um, has your, y'all, have y'all started yet? So we had an inner squad scrimmage today. Okay. So we just had a first scrimmage. And then our first game is in next two, two weeks. Okay, because, awesome. One week. Because <laughs> Tuesday, another scrimmage on Thursday, and then a game the next Tuesday. There awesome. we go. <laughs> It's getting it's getting close. I know here uh, where I'm at, they started just last week, I think. So everything's kind of getting into full swing with mm-hmm. softball and everything. So good luck with that, with your this yeah. season coming up in high school. And uh, we'll be checking back with you to kind of see how things are going, obviously, before you go into college later on. But good luck with everything, and thank you for joining me today. Thank you. You're welcome. You have a good day. You too. Bye.